The Premier League is one of the richest and most watched sports leagues in the world, but there was a time that such wealth in English football was unthinkable. After violence and disaster had ruined the game, how did a secret deal change football forever? English football in the 1980s had a terrible image. Despite clubs' on-field success on the European stage, with English clubs winning seven of eight European Cups from 1977 to 1984, hooliganism was rife in the game, with violence at away matches common, and ageing stadiums had become unsafe for spectators. In the 1985 European Cup final between Liverpool and Juventus at Heisel Stadium in Belgium, 39 football supporters, mostly Italians, were killed in a crush when a wall in the stadium collapsed after fan violence. English fans were held responsible for the disaster and all English clubs were banned from European competition indefinitely. This was preceded by a large fire at Bradford's Valley Parade Stadium leading to the deaths of 56 supporters and followed by the Hillsborough disaster in 1989 when 96 Liverpool supporters were crushed to death at an FA Cup semi-final in Sheffield. Initially blamed on hooliganism by the press, it was poor policing and an unsafe stand designed to trap supporters that were ultimately at fault. All of these events led to the government commissioning the Taylor Report, which advised the conversion of all professional football stadiums to be fully seated across England. However, for the clubs, this meant reduced capacities in the stadiums, meaning less people through the door and less money on the gate. England are in the semi-final. It's Cottage. And England are out of the World Cup. After the 1990 World Cup, public interest in football was at a high point, with over 26 million people in the UK watching England lose to Germany on penalties in the semi-final. As clubs were looking for new sources of revenues after seeing gate receipts drop, it seemed that televising their games would be very lucrative, but the rights to the broadcast were controlled by the competition organisers, the Football League. At the same time, English football's governing body, the Football Association, were desperate to wrestle control of the sport back from the league, who essentially ran the game. This led director of ITV Sport, Greg Dyke, to meet representatives from the five biggest clubs in England. Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester United, Everton and Tottenham Hotspur, in order to discuss a breakaway competition with the authority of the FA behind it. However, the Football Association had no real plan and during a meeting between them and the clubs, FA Chairman Sir Bert Millichip said after a dispute over the number of teams competing, it's your league, you decide. This effectively handed the clubs the power to decide their own destiny and terms were agreed for a breakaway from the constraints of the Football League with no objection or influence from the FA. However, the big losers were ITV, by the time TV rights were to be decided, new pay TV corporation B Sky B, owned by Australian billionaire Rupert Murdoch, were desperate to use football as a vehicle for their failing satellite television network Sky. In a meeting at the Royal Lancaster Hotel to decide who would gain the broadcasting rights, ITV Deputy Chief Trevor East disregarded an earlier deadline for bids and presented a deal for £262 million over five years. A key figure in this deal was Tottenham Hotspur owner Alan Sugar. Sugar was supplying Rupert Murdoch's Sky with satellites from his company Amstrad and stood to gain massively from the deal. He called Murdoch and urged him to f***ing get your arse round here and blow them out of the water. Murdoch obliged and a joint bid between Sky and BBC to split the live broadcast and the highlights respectively, where £304 million was approved with a vote of 14 to 6, and the TV rights revenue has spiralled upwards ever since, with the latest domestic deal worth over £5 billion to the Premier League. And United are home! The Cup Winners' Cup of 1991 belongs to Manchester United! This newfound money and the lifting of English clubs' European ban in 1990 led to an influx of dazzling foreign talent who went on to become Premier League legends. 
Players such as Eric Cantona, Dennis Bergkamp, Jurgen Klinsmann and Gianfranco Zola brought glamour to England to rival that of the incredible Italian league of the 90s. And when Manchester United won the Champions League in 1999, it was the first time an English club won Europe's premier competition for 15 years and heralded a run of English success in Europe throughout the 2000s. Ultimately, the real winners of this deal were the owners who conceived the plan. David Dean made £75 million selling his Arsenal shares to Alisher Usmanov. Martin Edwards £94 million when Manchester United was sold to the Glazers. And David Moores made £90 million selling Liverpool to the calamitous Hicks and Gillette. Meanwhile, as fans feared at the dawn of all-seater stadiums, ticket prices had soared over 1,000% since 1990, with the average season ticket price in the Premier League now over £650. However, despite this, attendances have grown and grown as the Premier League has spread internationally, and English football is now the envy of the world, both on and off the pitch.